for part B of a question like this, we might say, well, first of all, I'm going to carry over some old information because I want to keep it on my page. The E total, you have it on your page already. You don't need to rewrite this, but I'm going to. The E total, the total mechanical energy, is equal to 0 0.8872 joules, unrounded. Okay, so that's something that I just want to make sure that I have. And here's my question. What is the maximum height that the, trav that the uh, pebble can reach? In other words, how high can this thing go? If I launch it straight vertically, and it had uh, at a velocity of 3.2 meters per second at the 4 meter mark, as we said in part A, how high can I get this thing to go? Well, before I do that, and some of you already want to jump to the answer, right? Because like some people are sort of seeing where, where all the energy is coming from. But I just want to paint the full picture, OK? We've got this object, and it's starting off from some low height. And it's getting up to some high height, some maximum height. And when it was down at the bottom, did it have a lot of speed or a little speed? A lot, right? Because you, you launch something upwards, launches with a high speed. So it's got a high speed at the beginning. When it gets up to the top of its motion, you know from projectile motion, zero. Yeah, if you launch something vertically upwards at its maximum height, it's going to have zero velocity. So we don't know how much velocity it started with, but what we do know is the velocity up here is equal to zero meters per second. We know that. And down here, what can you tell me about EG at the zero height? Zero, yeah. So all this gravitational or all this kinetic energy down here got turned into what type of energy up here? Gravitational potential. Okay. So I want to write this out. I want to write down this special case at the bottom. E total at the bottom, total mechanical energy. And I'm just going to write E capital T. Total energy is equal to E G plus E K at the bottom. And sometimes people will say, oh well. We'll do that after the lesson. Uh, at position one and at position two, so E total at position one is equal to gravitational potential energy at position one plus the kinetic energy at position one. I'm just writing a one after the G and the K. Okay. And I could say up here, I've got E total equal to EG2 plus EK2. And what you guys just told me is that at the top, since the velocity is equal to zero, kinetic energy is equal to? Zero, right? One half mv squared, where v is zero, makes ek equal to zero. And at the beginning, what was the gravitational potential energy equal to? Zero. Big goose egg. Zero. So then at the beginning, what I could say is that e total at the beginning is equal to kinetic energy at the beginning. E total at the end is equal to gravitational potential energy. So all the stuff that you start out as kinetic energy gets converted into gravitational potential energy, essentially. So if, if I know how much total energy I had halfway up, as we found in part A, how much total energy do you suppose I have at the top? Same as at the bottom. And it, here's the rule. We call it the law of conservation of energy. So I want to write, write it out, just so that we have it. It just says that energy is neither created nor destroyed. we could add on to that, it just changes forms. Okay, so we might start out with all kinetic energy and it changes into the form gravitational potential energy. Yes, sir? We've said it informally a couple times. I just want to, I want to put it in writing. And you can see how it works with the equations. I may start off with kinetic energy. It doesn't disappear. The energy doesn't disappear, that is. It just becomes gravitational potential energy. 
the total amount of energy doesn't change before and after. Okay? So I, I might even say the energy before equals the energy, the total amount of energy that I have after. How much energy did I have, or what's my total energy for this scenario? Can you see it on the page? Yep. 0.8872 Yeah. So I'm going to say E total. If I want to find the maximum height that this thing can go up to, E total at position 2 is equal to EG2 plus EK2. And I know that at position 2, the kinetic energy is equal to 0. So I can say E total at position 2, which by the same way is the same as E total at position 1. We're just trying to be very specific here, is equal to mass times acceleration due to gravity times delta dy at position 2. Or in other words, the height at position 2. And if I want to figure, if I want to figure out what the height is going to be at position 2, I just have to rearrange, because I know the mass. I know 9.81 meters per second squared, and I previously calculated what the total energy was for this whole system, so I can figure out what the highest height is for this thing using just conservation of energy. Forget about the kinematics for a minute. We can use energy, and I know we could probably come back and revisit this with kinematics if you really wanted to. But I know most of you probably don't want to. So let's do it by conservation of energy, okay? If I had told you there was an easier way when we were in the kinematics unit, you would have said, oh yeah, give it to me, come on, let me know. Let's do it now. Divided by mass times acceleration due to gravity equals delta dy at time 2. Delta dy at time 2 is going to be, and we're going to plug in some values here. So total energy, we said unrounded, was 0 0.8872 joules divided by, uh, we said that this thing had a mass of yeah, 0 0.02 kilograms. I'm going to drop the trailing zeros just to make it a little bit tidier, but we know that they're there. 0 0.02 kilograms times 9.81. Somewhere around 4.5, I think. Anybody got it? Yeah? 4.5219. Oh, let's say 4.522. Okay? Meters. And if we round it off to our three sig figs, which is all I, I gave you here, we can just say 4.52 meters. And if we want to know the direction, well, based on the story, it's up. Okay? We've gone up 4.52 meters. So after our original 4 meters from part A, we went up another 0.52 meters up to the apex of this motion, okay? Now, I could ask uh, a part C. If I want to talk about the extremes in a scenario, now I've talked about the extreme height. What's the other extreme in this picture? The speed. What was its maximum speed? We found its maximum position. We can find its maximum speed. Now, I'm going to take this sheet away. Which type of energy do you think is going to help us to find the maximum speed? Yeah, kinetic, why not? Okay, so part C. Part C. I know people jump ahead on these things, and, and you're quite right. That's how we're doing it. So we're going to write down the total energy again. You don't have to write it because you already have it on your page, but I'm going to write it again just so I have access to it on the screen. 0 0.8872 joules. And here's the question. How fast was the pebble going? when it was launched. Okay, and again, the picture is that we've got this ground level. We've got a, a pebble, goes up to its maximum height, starts off with this huge speed, gets up to the maximum height where V is equal to zero. And you could say that E total at the bottom is equal to EG plus EK, and E total at the top also equal to EG plus EK. And we say that at the top, since it comes to a stop, kinetic energy is equal to zero. 
But at the bottom, since it's starting from a height of 0, eg is equal to 0, because the height is equal to 0. And of course, eg is based on height, whereas ek is based, is based on the speed. And we can say that e total at position 1 is going to be equal to just the kinetic energy at position 1. Now, since the energy isn't created or destroyed according to, new, uh, according to the law of conservation of energy, we already know what E total is, because E total at position 1 is equal to E total at position 2. It's equal to E total at any position along this trip, right? We can add up E, G, and E, K, and it will always add up to being E total. That's something that we could probably agree on. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to plug in E total at position 1 equals, instead of E, K, 1, I'm going to say 1 half m v, now v at position 1, squared. So I'm going to say v1, because that's position 1, down here at the bottom. And I'm going to isolate to find v1. Multiplying both sides by 2 then is e total, position 1. Dividing both sides by m then is 2 times e total at position 1, divided by m equals, I could say v1 squared, but you know I'm going to cut out one step and I'm going to square root both sides. So I could just say v1 is equal to the square root of the left-hand side there. Take the v1 over to the other side, just for nice format, and start subbing in some values. And you get v1 is equal to 2 times the e total, which we said previously, 0.8872 joules, divided by the mass of this pebble, which was 20 grams, or 0 0.02 kilograms. And we'll square root the whole thing. Now, while people are calculating that, I just want to do a quick little aside about the units here. You and I both know that joules are really kilogram meters squared per second squared. So if I have joules divided by kilograms, the kilograms are going to cancel out. So that what units are left inside of these square brackets? Square root brackets, I mean. Yeah. Meters squared per second squared. Yeah, meters squared per second squared. So I, I know V1 is going to be equal to square root of something or other meters squared per second squared. Now, that's something or other. I know you guys are going to just do the square root. I'm not going to write an extra step. But when I square root meters squared per second squared, what would the units be? Meters per second. The units always work out. That's the beautiful thing about all these guys. So V1, the square root of all these calculations should be somewhere, is it a little less than 9.5? 9.419. Let's round it off to three sig figs. 9.42. Approximately equal to 9.42 meters per second. Now if I wanted to make this a velocity, what direction? Up. Yeah, we've got to know the story. Now it only asked you for the maximum speed, it didn't ask you for the, velo for the velocity, but hey, you know, we should be able to talk to the story. 9.42 meters per second up. Okay.